blue part off. I'm going to um, remind you with this blue back that we said that for the direct write off, I wait until I'm 100% sure that the date of payment comes and the customer did not show up. So I will I record the, this amount as um, but that expense as uncollectible. Uh, so, um, for example, if the sale transaction or the uh, was done in 2019, as I said last time. So the revenue is recorded in 2019, however, the payment date is in 2020, so when the customer did not show up and pay the amount he owed to the company, the company is going to record the that expense uh, in 2020. So we will have an expense recorded in 2020 that is related to another accounting period, related to revenue generated in another accounting period, which is 2019. So this will um, generate a mismatch which will avoid, uh, which uh, uh, violate a very important concept to our principle or principle we have in accounting, which is the matching principle, stating that we should have in every accounting period expenses matched with the same revenue, with the revenue generated in the same period. So the announced method appeared to overcome this uh, drawback. Actually, uh, for the allowance method, we said it's based on estimation. According to the manager's experience from dealing with a certain customer, they asked them to expect that this customer will not pay a certain amount of money. So this estimation is done using different methods, the percent of sales and the percent of accounts receivable. And I said last time that the percent of accounts receivable, there is the third method, but I, um, I put it under the umbrella of the percent of accounts receivable because it's the same concept but different idea. Uh, which is uh, percent of sales, you know, we have the percentage and we multiply by the credit sales or the sales that we have in order to arrive to the uncollectible amount that will be recorded in the entry of uh, recording or estimating uh, the bad debts. However, for the percent uh, of accounts receivable, we will see today we, we make the percentage multiplied by the amount of accounts receivable, however, this uh, amount that is generated from this multiplication is not going to be put directly or inserted directly in the entry. You will find what we will do, we will do further calculation to arrive to the number that will be inserted in the entry for recording or estimating the bad debt. Okay, we, we said that there are other methods called the aging of accounts receivable. It's the same idea, sorry, it's the same concept actually. Uh, for the percent of accounts receivable that I multiply the percentage with the amount of accounts receivable and we'll see today what the further calculation that we do to arrive to the amount of uh, cards that will be inserted in the entry for estimating the balance. However, the agent of accounts receivable, the new idea here is that we just uh, categorize or we divide the customers by categories. Uh, for example, saying that category A uh, we'll have, for example, the customers that uh, the payment uh, date has passed, 90 days past, 90 days due after the payment date, for example, and so on. And each category, we just estimate uh, a certain percentage of uh, accounts receivable in order to do our calculation to arrive to the amount of cards that will be inserted in the entry for recording the bad debt, as we will see in a few minutes. Okay? So the age of accounts receivable just will have the uh, customers divided into categories and each category having the percentage and so on. Uh, we'll find uh, today exercise two um, and we'll explain this uh, thoroughly in exercise two. Okay. Uh, let's first I want to uh, remind you with the interest that we do using the, um, to account for the but that's using the allowance method. The entry that we need first for estimating the bad debts, so in order to estimate the bad debt, we say that this entry is recorded on the same date the sale happened. The, we say debit bad debt expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts, which we say that it's a contra asset account. Then we have also an entry for writing of the uncollectible amount, stating that the, we debit the allowance for doubtful accounts. Uh, because now we are not doubting that this amount will not be collected. We are now quite sure that this amount will not be collected since the date of payment comes. Then we credit the accounts receivable because as we said last time, I cannot leave the accounts receivable with the same amount recorded as it is in the balance sheet because anyone who will have a look at my financial statement or balance sheet will understand that I am waiting for this amount of money to be received in the future. However, I lost hope to collect it because the date of payment comes and the customer did not show up and pay his, uh, the amount that he owed to me at the company. 
So I carried the cancer theme. Also, we have two inches that we should record when we have recovery of bad debts. What I mean by, re by recovery of bad debts, I mean that after I write off a certain amount of money that I say it will, be, it will not be collectible from my customer, the customer unexpectedly comes and pay for me the amount for any reason. Uh, as I said, his financial position improved whatsoever. Uh, the, the most important part for me here that we want to make or to record two entries, one entry for, for the recovery, I need to record two entries, one entry. Uh, reversing what I have already done in the writing of, so I just say, say debit account strategy set allowance for downfill accounts and the other entry for recording of cash, the collection, recording the collection of cash, so I say debit cash and credit accounts receivable. Okay, so please, please remember that when we have any recovery of bad debts, I record two entries. Okay, let's start with exercise one, percent of accounts receivable method. If you remember last time, we have sold uh, the estimation using the percent of sales method. In the percent of sales, it's so simple. I just multiply the percentage times the amount of sales that is given to me in the exercise of the problem. And the number that is generated from this multiplication is the number that is inserted in the entry for estimating the bad debt, and that's it. So it's so simple. Here in the percent of accounts receivable, we'll find it a little bit um, complicated. Uh, because just we do not uh, take the percentage times the amount of accounts receivable and that's it. No, this uh, number is not the number that is inserted in the entry for estimating bad debts. We make further calculation that we will see now. And I will elaborate for you why we do this for the percent of sales and why we do this for the percent of accounts receivable before starting to sort. Okay, if you remember uh, the temporary and permanent accounts that we have taken uh, the previous semester, uh, when we say when we say that the temporary accounts having the revenues, expenses, as well and so on, so the revenues or the field is a temporary account. However, for the permanent accounts, we say that uh, we have assets, uh, liabilities, and capital. So, on. so accounts receivable is a type of current asset, so it is a permanent account. So when we have the percent of sales, we multiply percentage times a temporary account, which is sales. That's why we are quite sure that the number generated from this multiplication is the number inserted in the entry because it is the bad debt expense for this period, for this accounting period. Because we start each accounting period with zero expenses and zero revenues because they are temporary accounts. However, for the accounts receivable, it's a permanent account. So when I multiply the percentage by the accounts receivable, the number generated is not uh, reflecting the allowance for doubtful debts, for example, for this uh, accounting uh, or the bad debt expense for this accounting period. No, because we multiply percentage with, by a template, by a permanent account, which is the accounts receivable, which is accumulated from the beginning of the life of the company. It's not closed at the end of each accounting period at the template account. So when I multiply the percentage by the accounts receivable, this number is accumulated. It's not uh, reflecting the bad debt expense for this accounting period only. Okay. Let's start with exercise one: percent of sales accounts receivable method. At each calendar year end, Mazi Supply Corporation uses the percent of accounts receivable method to estimate bad debts. On December 31st, 2017, it has an outstanding accounts receivable of $55,000 and it estimates that 2% will be uncollectible. Required, prepare the adjusting entry to record bad debt expense for year 2017 under the assumption that the allowance for doubtful accounts has $415 credit balance before the adjustment and 291 debit balance before the adjustment. Let's start with the first scenario, $415 credit balance before the adjustment. Okay. So the entry for the first scenario will be as follows. The entry, we know that the entry for any estimation for the bad debt using the allowance will be debit bad debt expense and credit allowance for the accounts. But from where did we get to we arrive at this number, to this number? Uh, let's see. First, if you remember, it said in the problem that 2% will be uncollectible. So we are going to multiply 2% times the amount of accounts received. So it will be 2% times 55,000, which gives us 1,400. What is this 1,400? It is the end balance for the allowance for doubtful account. So uh, if you can see here, this 
is the seat count for the allowance for doubtful accounts or I can say doubtful for doubtful that account okay you will find that here in the ending balance One thousand four one thousand one hundred. Okay, that we get, got when we multiply the um, sixty-five thousand times zero point two uh, times point zero two, the two percent. And it is uh, said in the problem that for the, this first scenario that there is four hundred and fifteen existing in the credit side. So this thing balance unadjusted existing balance will be here as it said four hundred and fifty okay what we need to know here that the number that we're going to insert in this entry. Um, so I want to know here the bad that expense. This is unknown. Okay. What we will make is that we are going to we are going to just make one thousand one hundred here minus four hundred and fifteen, which will give us six hundred eighty five. Okay, and this is the number that we inserted here, the 685. Okay. So we say to record the estimated bad six times, the unadjusted balance is 416 in the credit side, and we have the ending balance. We have the ending balance, the estimated balance, as we have already. Uh, got here 1110 so we are going to make 1110 minus 415 which will give us 685 in the credit side okay so we got the whole picture when we are solving using estimating using the percentage of accounts receivable I make the percentage times the amount of accounts receivable, but we should make. Uh, uh, I want to 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 know that this number is not going to be inserted in the entry. We need to make further calculation. What is the further calculation? I see that uh, it will be more easy if you do the T account for an allowance for doubtful debt as I have just drawn for you here. So we'll say that the unadjusted balance, as it stated in the first scenario, is 115, and we have the ending balance that we have already got by the multiplication of the percentage with the accounts receivable by 1110. So the ending balance minus the unadjusted balance, if it's in the credit side, we're going to make it minus. The, this minus this will give us 685 that we're going to put here in the entry. Okay? Let's see the another scenario. So I want you to remember that when the existing balance in the credit side, we subtract. Let's see another scenario, the second scenario, which is saying that we have the existing balance in the debit side. We have 291, I think, in the debit side. What we are going to make? The same that we have just made the beginning step, that we make the percentage time the accounts receivable, and we're already having it with 1,110 ending balance. So, if I'm going here to 
do the T account I've just as I've just uh, made in the previous scenario so here the T account for allowance for doubtful debt for allowance for doubtful account I have the ending balance as it was in the previous scenario 1110 However, here in this scenario, we have 291 in the debit side. 291 in the debit side. So, I want to know the bad debt expense will be here in order to bring the entry I will just add, I will add 1,410 and 291. I add them, which will give me 1,391, and this is the number that we already inserted in the image. So you knew now how did this number, how we arrive to this, how we arrive to this number. Okay, so. Uh, the estimated uh, balance or the unbalance as it is 1110 to record the estimated by that expense we just uh, uh, take the unadjusted balance which is the existing one in the debit side 191 plus the estimated balance with the end balance that we have already generated 1100 uh, 1, then this will give us the required adjustment that we want to insert it, to insert in the entry which is one uh, thousand one thousand three hundred ninety one. So when the existing balance in the debit side we add, we do not subtract, we add. Okay, let's move to exercise two. Exercise two is about aging of accounts receivable. The third method that I that I told you at the beginning uh, for estimating bad debts using the allowance method. In this exercise, it said that a Jardin company has credit sales of three million six hundred thousand dollars for year 2017. On December 31st, 2017, the company's allowance for doubtful accounts has an unadjusted credit balance of $14,500. Jordan prepares a schedule of its December 31st, 2017 accounts receivable by age. Okay. Uh, on the basis of past experience, it is made the percent of receivable in each category uh, that will be uncollectible. The information is summarized here. Here we find in the first column December 31st, 2017, accounts receivable, and in the second column, age of accounts receivable, then expected percent uncollectible. What we are going just to make here that we are going to multiply the first column with, this, with the third column. We are going to multiply the accounts receivable with the, the expected percent uncollectible. So, uh, the first uh, requirement estimate the required balance of the allowance doubtful accounts at December 31st 2017 using the aging of accounts receivable method which is very easy as I've just said I just multiply the column of the accounts receivable with the column of the percentage then I add them 
So calculation of estimated balance of the allowance for uncollectibles, for example, the first category not due is 30,000 times 0 0.0125, and the second category, and so on, the same, uh, the same uh, method. I just multiply the percentage with, in the same way, the same the percentage with the accounts receivable in each category. Then I add all of them to arrive to 41,650, which uh, for sure will be in. Uh, in the credit side. Okay, this is part two. What about part two? Number two, prepare the adjusting entry to record bad debt expense at December 31st, 2017. What is the entry for recording the bad debt expense? The estimation entry. I just debit the bad, uh, the entry would be I just debit the bad debt expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts. From where did I arrive to this number? Again, estimated balance equal for 41,650 when I multiply the percentage with uh, when I multiply the percentage with accounts receivable. Uh, okay, in the previous slide we have already calculated and we have 41,650. Uh, then to record the estimated bad debt, I have an adjusted balance. 14,500 in the credit side is stated in the problem. Then we have estimate the estimated balance 41,650. So I uh, subtract 41,650. I uh, subtract 14,500 from 41,650, which will give me the required adjustment that is 27,150. Okay, in the credit side. If you want to draw a C account as I just drawn for you in the previous uh, exercise, you can. You just go the C account and write in the C account the ending balance, which is the 41650, and you have an adjusted balance in the credit side with 14500. You just uh, make this minus this. the ending balance minus the unadjusted balance. You arrive to the, uh, in the the number that we will insert in the entry for estimating the balance. Okay. Moving to part three, on June 30, 2015, Jordan Company concluded that a customer for, for 750 receivable created in 2017 is uncollectible, and that the uh, account should be written off. What effect this will uh, the, uh, what effect will this action have on Jordan's 2018 net income exchange? Okay, let's uh, um, explain for the, ourselves this uh, three lines in number three. Actually, Jordan Company concludes that 4,750 created already in 2017 is uncollectible, which means that in 2017 we already recorded an adjusting entry for estimating the bad debt, sta uh, stating that we debit the bad debt expense and credit allows for doubtful accounts with the 4,750. Now, we, f we found that this 4,750 is actually uncollectible, so we want to write out this amount. We are now sure, we are not doubting. So the entry will be debit the allowance for doubtful accounts and credit accounts receivable because we are now sure. So what effect will this action have on Jordan's uh, 2018 net income? Actually, it would not directly affect the net income because what I've just said, the entry that I said, debit allowance for doubtful accounts and credit accounts receivable. So both of them are balance sheet accounts. They will not affect net income for 2018. So, uh, what I say here, writing of the account receivable in 2018 will not directly affect year 2018 net income. The entry to write out the accounts, uh, uh, to write uh, an account, involves, as I just said, that allowance for doubtful accounts and credit accounts receivable. So, both of them are balance sheet accounts. The net income is affected only by the annual recognition of the estimated bad debt expense, which is already recorded in 2017. The adjusting entry recorded in 2017. Net income for year 2017 include an estimated expense for write of such as this one. That's what I've just said, okay? Okay, let's move to exercise three, which is an important exercise. It's somehow comprehensive, uh, comprehending different ideas uh, that we are uh, told in this chapter. Okay, uh, exercise three says that a young company began operations in January 1, 2016, 
During its first two years, the company completed a number of transactions involving sales and credit, accounts receivable collections, and bad debts. These transactions are summarized as follows. In 2016, sold 1,345,434 of merchandise that had cost $975,000 on credit, terms and slash sales. Wrote off $15,300 of uncollectible accounts receivable. Received $669,200 cash in payment of accounts receivable. In adjusting the accounts on December 31st, the company estimated that 1.5% of accounts receivable will be uncollectible. We have similar transactions also in 2017. What is required in this problem or in this exercise is to prepare domain interest to record the Liang 2016 and 2017 summarized transactions and its year end adjustments to record by that expense. The company uses perpetual inventory system and it applies the allowance method for its accounts receivable. Round amount to the nearest dollars. So we need to highlight here. that the company uses perpetual inventory system. Also we need to highlight that the company is using the allowance method for its accounts received, not the direct right off. Okay. Let's start with year 2016 with the first uh, transaction stating that uh, the company sold 1,345,434 merchandise that had cost 975,000 in credit terms and slash sales. The company sold merchandise and credit. So this means that we're going to debit the accounts receivable. Again, I'm highlighting this point once more. Why do we have these two different numbers? The first number I used to Record, record the revenue. The first entry will be for recording the revenue, the sales I mean. And the second entry, and the second number, sorry, for recording the cost of goods sold for the second entry. So let's see what we are going to record now for this transaction. In 2016, A, I'm going to debit accounts receivable, credit sales by 1,345,434. I need another entry since the company is using perpetual inventory system, so I need an another entry to record the cost of goods sold, debit cost of goods sold and credit merchandise inventory with the 975,000 the cost. Okay, moving to the second transaction. Moving to the second transaction, also in 2016, wrote off $18,300 of uncollectible accounts receivable. What will be the entry? The entry for writing off the uncollectible amount. So it will be. So the entry will be debit allowance for doubtful accounts, credit accounts receivable by $18,300. Here I am sure that this amount will not going to be collected since the date of payment came and the customer did not show up, did not pay the amount he owed to the company. So I decreased the allowance for doubtful accounts that was previously increased when I was just estimating and expecting or doubting that this amount was not going to be collected. However, now I'm sure, so I decreased the allowance for doubtful accounts, so it's debit allowance for doubtful accounts, and I credit accounts receivable since I'm sure now that this amount was not going to be collected. Uh, so. I, um, I should not uh, leave the accounts receivable as it is with 18300 because as I previously said, anyone who will look at my financial statement, the balance sheet, will see that I'm waiting for this 18300 to be received in the future. However, I'm not. Since the date of payment came and the customer did not show up, did not pay the, com the amount of money he owed to the company. Okay. Um, then... For uh, the following entry, the collection of cash, 
I just debit cash with 669,200 and a credit account receivable with 669,200. Okay. Okay, moving to the last transaction, 2016, in addressing accounts on December 31st, the company estimated that 1.5% of accounts receivable will be uncollectible. So I need he here to make the entry for estimation. Remember that here I'm using the percent of accounts receivable. As I previously said, when I'm using the percent of accounts receivable, please remember that we make the percentage multiplied, multiplied by the amount of accounts receivable but the amount that is uh, generated from this multiplication is not the number that I'm going to insert in the entry for the estimation. Like the percent of sales, and the percent of sales, as I said before, I just multiply the percentage with the amount of sales. This number was, was going to be inserted in the entry for estimation. However, here in the percent of accounts receivable, no. I need to make further calculations to arrive to the number that is going to be inserted in the entry for estimation. The reason for that I previously uh, explained it when I say when I said about the difference between the temporary and permanent account. Sales is a temporary account. That's why we are sure that the um, the multiplication, the output of this multiplication, since it's multiplied by a temporary account, is the bad debt expense for this period only. However, when the multiplication is done with permanent accounts, such as accounts receivable, the Output generated from this multiplication is not for this period only, it's accumulated from the beginning of the life of the company. Okay, let's see here uh, how we're going to record the entry for this estimation. Of course, you know the entry will be debit, but that expense and credit allows for doubtful account. This is the entry for the estimation. From where did I arrive to this number? Let's see. First, I I see the amount receivable, receivable in order to multiply by the percentage, which is 1.5%. Here the beginning receivable that we have is zero. However, we have credit sale with 1,345,434 and there are some collections of accounts receivable as for setting this sub in this exercise with 669,200. So I'm going to deduct the 669,200 from the credit sales and also I'm going to deduct the write-offs because in, the ri in writing off the uncollectible amount I just say debit allows for doubtful accounts and credit accounts receivable. So I arrive to the ending receivable which is 657,934. Okay, so I have the number of the accounts receivable here. I multiply by 1.5% to arrive to the required ending allowance. The ending balance for the allowance for doubtful accounts is 9,869. So I'm going to add the unadjusted balance for this is credit, so I'm going to add it to the unadjusted balance, which is 18,300, in order to arrive to the adjustment to the allowance that is going, this, with this number is going to be inserted in the entry, 28,169. This is the number I put in the entry. Again, I have, when I arrive to the ending balance of the allowance here for doubtful account which is 9,869 of course credit I just added to the 18,300 the unadjusted balance the existing balance since it's debit so I add these two numbers to each other in order to arrive the adjustment to the allowance which is 28,169 if uh, we're going to draw the T account to understand this more, here's the T account for the allowance for doubtful debt, so doubtful accounts.
I have here the ending balance. From where did I get this ending balance? From the multiplication of the 1.5% with the amount of ending receivable that we calculated here, the 657,934. Okay, and we have unadjusted balance existing here in the debit side. It's already given uh, in the problem. Exercise. With 18,000. I need to get the bad debt expense for this please. Here it's unknown for me. The ending balance is 9869 as we already calculated when we multiply the percentage with the, the amount of ending account receivable. So in order to arrive to the bad debt expense here, which is unknown for me, I just uh, add these two numbers to each other since the existing balance is in the debit side and we previously said that when the existing balance is in the debit side I just add the ending balance to the existing balance however it is the existing if the existing balance in the credit side I subtract I, say I subtract the ending uh, the existing balance from the ending balance in order to arrive to the um, bad debt expense for this piece okay Moving to the following year, 2017, there are also uh, similar transactions that we need to record the entry for it. Uh, the first transaction in which the company sold 1,525,634 of merchandise and credit that had cost of 1,250,000 turns and slash 30. The company sold merchandise and credit, so we need to make the entry to interest in the company is used perpetual inventory system. So I'm going to debit account receivable and credit sales with this amount uh, for this, this entry to record the sales. The another entry to record the cost of goods sold is going to be debit cost of goods sold, credit merchandise inventory is 1,250,000. Transaction. The second and third transactions actually wrote off uh, 27,800 for collectible accounts receivable, writing off uncollectible amount, and the third transaction receiving of cash received $1,204,600 uh, cash in payment for accounts receivable. What will be the interest for these two transactions? Um, for the um, for writing off the uncollectible amount, it's debit allowance for doubtful account and credit the accounts receivable with 27,800. This is the entry for writing of this uncollectible amount. The uh, other entry or the other transaction for collection or receiving of cash of uh, the payment for accounts receivable, debit cash and credit accounts receivable with 1,204,600. Okay, for the last transaction in 2017, 
In adjusting the accounts from December 31st, the company estimated that 1.5% of accounts receivable will be uncollected. We need to make an entry for estimating the uncollectible amount. Remember that we are using the percent of accounts receivable, saying that 1.5% of accounts receivable will be uncollectible. Again, I need to multiply the percentage with the accounts receivable in order to arrive for the ending balance for allows for doubtful accounts. So I need to make further calculations in order to know the existing bad, uh, so sorry, in order to know the bad that expands for this period. So I see how much in the existing balance for the allows for doubtful debt, and I arrive to the ending balance by multiplying the percentage with the accounts receivable, so I will be able to arrive to the bad that expands for this period. I will explain it more and elaborate it more now while solving or while recording the entry for this problem, for this transaction. Okay, so the entry will be the entry for estimation that we used to debit that debt expense and allowance for doubtful accounts. From where did we arrive to this number? From where did I get this number? Let's see. First of all, I want to know how much accounts receivable do I have in order to multiply it by the percentage. So the beginning accounts receivable is the beginning balance for the accounts receivable is 657,534. This number is the ending accounts receivable balance in 2016, and we know that the ending balance for the previous year is the beginning for the current year. Also, I want to add the credit sales in this year, which is 1,525,634. Uh, also, there are some collections this year, so I would need to deduct it as well as I'm going to return the write off since in the write off it's debit allowance for doubtful debt, and for debit allowance for doubtful debt, credit accounts receivable, so the accounts receivable is decreased. So the ending accounts receivable will be 961,568. I'm going to multiply this ending balance for accounts receivable with the 1.5% in order to arrive to the ending balance for allows for doubtful account, which is 14,268 in the credit side. And the allowance for doubtful accounts has credit nature. I need to know how much is the unadjusted balance, the existing balance, in order to know if I'm going to the, to add it to the balance of the ending balance for the allowance for doubtful debt, or I'm going to deduct it. This depends on where is the existing balance, whether it is in the debit or credit side. If it's the unadjusted balance or the existing balance in the debit side, so I'm going to add it to this ending balance of the allowance for doubtful accounts. If it's in the credit side, so I'm going to deduct it from this number in order to arrive to the bad debt expense for this period. Let's see first the unadjusted balance is how much. I have beginning balance for the uh, uh, allowance for doubtful account, which is 9869 This is the ending balance for the allowance in the previous year, 2016, so it will be the beginning for this year. Of course, in the uh, credit side. Then I have write-off in the debit side in this year. Since in the writing off, I say debit allowance for doubtful debt with 27,800. So I'm going to see the difference between these two numbers since one number is in the credit side and the other in the debit. And of course, in the debit side is great greater. So I'm going to have 17,931,000 in the debit side since the debit side is greater than the credit side. So I have the existing balance with the unadjusted balance uh, with a debit or in the debit side. So I'm going to add it to the ending balance for allowance for doubtful debt, which is 14,268. To arrive to the adjustment to the allowance, which is the bad debt expense for the period that I need to insert in my entry for estimation, which is 32,199 that I inserted in the entry. So I add these two numbers, the ending balance for allowance, uh, allowance for doubtful accounts, as well as uh, the um, unadjusted balance or the existing balance. Let's do uh, quickly the say account for the allowance for doubtful debts in order to understand it more. Here is the say account for allowance for doubtful debts or doubtful accounts. We have the ending balance here. When I multiply the 1.5% with the ending balance for accounts receivable, I arrive to this ending balance for allowance for debt for debt, which is 14,268. I need to know how much is in the 
existing balance for allowance for the unadjusted balance I'm going to arrive to the unadjusted balance first I want to know how much is in the beginning balance for the allowance for doubt for the debt so I have beginning balance with 9,869 Okay And I have write off that I recorded this year with 20 7,800 in the debit side. give me the unadjusted balance which will be in the debit side since the, in the debit side the number is greater than the one in the credit side which is the beginning balance so I will have unadjusted balance with 17,000 931 which is the difference between the 27,800 and the 9,869 so I am having the adjusted balance in the debit card and have the ending balance here and I want to know how much is the bad debt expense for this piece. here the bad debt expense is the unknown for me So I'm going to add these two numbers to each other since the debit since the unadjusted balance is in the debit side as we previously said so I'm going to add these two numbers this number to the ending balance of the allowance for doubt and that's to arrive to the bad that expects for this period which is 32 would be 32,100 99 which is the number that we already inserted in the entry just try hide this point for you using the C account to be more clear and more easier for you to understand hope that this was beneficial for you that's it for our tutorial tutorial 5 any questions I used to say any questions uh, in the tutorial when we used to give the tutorial in our uh, classroom. So uh, anyway, any question, if you have any questions, you can just send me an email uh, through my uh, GC email, menatallah.tori.gc.edu.eg or the GIU email, menatallah.tori.gu-uni.de. Feel free to send me an email if you have any questions. Um, okay, hope this tutorial was uh, beneficial for you. Thank you.